Welcome everyone to the Minnesota Textile Center here on University Avenue in Minneapolis. All the bright colors and all of the materials used is just going to be an exciting treasure hunt for us. Well, I'd like to introduce you to Nancy Gross and Mia. Well, welcome to Textile Center. We're a national center for fiber art, and we are a place unlike any other in the country because we are not just focused on one fiber art technique. We cover them all. Uh, we have gallery spaces. We have the change fiber art exhibitions throughout the year. We have over 200 classes a year for adults. We have summer camps and other things for youth. We have a, an artisan shop. Uh, we have a dye lab, professional grade dye lab, a library, natural dye garden, and we're made up of about 30 different guilds and groups. And, and at that time, they were each doing things themselves, church basement, somebody's mm -hmm. kitchen table, yes. dragging their library books with them in their trunks of their cars, um, and said, well, what if we all got together? So that's really what happened, and, that, and this was originally a Ford automobile dealership from the 1920s, and they unearthed a lot of original features like the terrazzo floors and the big showroom mm. windows and other things you'll see, but certainly made it into our own space. Mm. You can do fiber art in solitary. You can take yes. it, many, much of it is portable, not all, but, mm. uh, but there's something about doing it with a community of others that really um, is inspiring. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right now it is uh, featuring two artisans from India. From, mm. okay. They're both from India and they do very different types of techniques, but they're all very um, older ancient techniques mm. that uh, are really lovely. Very true. And yeah. One of the most ancient uh, we have discovered is felting and that's uh, because many of the cultures from biblical times are, were woolen cultures and uh, they would often you know make felt for into their whether it was their um, places where they lived or what have you. It was one of the first and earliest techniques and there's a story that goes that St. Christopher was fleeing persecution and he took he and his uh, comrades took wool from their sheep and stuffed their sandals with it to help uh, you know, avoid blisters if oh. you will but because okay. the way to make felt it's through um, usually moisture like warm moisture or heat and uh, agitation uh, and rubbing, it turned it into felt. So it was almost like their first socks. And you know, we wear textiles. We are exposed to textiles from the time we're born till the time we die. And mm -hmm. it's just part of our daily lives. And mm -hmm. sometimes we just kind of take it more for granted, but a handmade textile is a very personal thing. Perhaps, did you have anyone in your family who made you a, a oh my, blanket yes. or clothes or knit you something? My grandmother was from Denmark and my grandfather they both immigrated but she had gone to a certain type of school that taught all the the needleworks and all, how to sew all of these things no she had crocheted the most beautiful bedspreads which oh. I have two of them oh and you still have them wonderful oh yes, yes I do too. as if you didn't have that in your family's uh, heritage you can learn it from others or we're here at Texel Center with our classes every trimester mm -hmm. we have a different series of classes that cover a wide variety of techniques so you can learn whatever and then you get inspired uh, one of the nice things about Textile Center is, is the breadth of techniques we offer and you know mm -hmm. you might come knowing one technique but you may want to learn mm -hmm. two or three or four others and mm -hmm. get cross-pollinated and sell you know the materials in the shop we sell kits in the shop we have classes in it and it's just a really fun little way to mm -hmm. get into fiber art I said whether it's wet felting or needle felting there's a lot more interest in where your fiber is coming from mm -hmm. what kind of fiber it is just like with the food we're eating now people want to mm -hmm. know is it where is it grown and is it organic and does it have you know what's in it and people are feeling that way about their textiles as well there's mm -hmm. a big push for natural dyes again. Welcome to Textile Center's library. It's one of the largest circulating textile related libraries in the country. We have over 30,000 volumes of all the different fiber arts and we're here with Nancy Mombi, our fabulous librarian who Hi. can help you find whatever it is you need. If you're a member of Textile Center you get the privilege of checking out books but anybody can come in here and do research and they do don't they? Yes. On all kinds of topics. Tuesday, so. text textile <laughs> artists on Tuesday. Sorry. <laughs> but they Working come, away. They come Beautiful. and work on their <laughs> projects. <laughs> and have a lot of fun. What are you going to do with those pieces? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just well, start making That's them. okay, too. And you can play with them like this, you know, and put them together and, you know, sure. like a little puzzle. And sure. I get to see other ideas of things um, that, I don't know, they kind of swirl around in my head. I don't know what I'll do with them, but I also am starting to get into some sewing um, because of these people, which is really cool. Yeah. Oh, so it's nice to be with a group that speaks the same Exactly. Yeah. You know. yeah, yeah, that's true too. And you're you're making wall hanging or no, no, no. it's an enormous rug which I it's a, maybe I was gonna did ask before you I finish first. it. It's it's forever. <laughs> and mainly we tell stories and 
talk about our backgrounds, but we critique each other's work too. But we have a lot of fun. It's all good. It's all good. That's wonderful. Do you cut your own strips for? Yeah, I have a cutter. Okay. Yep. Okay. That cuts the okay. strips. Not only a hooker, she's a stripper too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, onward then. <laughs> and then this is a magnet that most of us who are into rug hooking use so that we never lose our hook or our scissors. Is that ever smart? Yeah. I mean, if you remember that. I actually am working on a tapestry for an exhibit. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. um, that, that is, is cool. Yeah, inspired by a Norwegian tapestry called the Baldeshal. And it will be at the Norway house. Do we have yeah. Norway too? Oh, this mm -hmm. is natural dyed mm. from Matter Root. And mm -hmm. this is natural dyed from Indigo. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also use Goldenrod. Oh, because mm -hmm. the tapestry I'm inspired by was made in the 11th century, mm -hmm. I was using, I thought it'd be fun to use the natural dyes yes. that they would have used. Yes, so. it's gorgeous. Yeah. gorgeous. And I, I'm freelance. I do uh, crochet and um, I'm starting to learn how to make a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. And, and embroidery, and we just, like you said, we just look for the stories. And mm -hmm. We uh, kind of critique each other's things. And, so. mm -hmm. Encourage. We do a lot oh, of yeah. encouraging. Oh, yeah. And there's That's one, That's important. two, three, And some three, of us go to classes. Four. And I haven't gone to class yet. Okay. Okay. Four people wearing sweaters that they make. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Wearing a scarf. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Oh, good for you guys. Did you knit your sweater? I'm sorry, did you knit your sweater? Yes. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Nice. I'm praying with yarns, and uh, I'm just making a picture, like oh, wow. a painting with yarn. Oh, that's cool. Is that crochet? Rent. Yeah, crochet, in this oh, case, wow. but the, just the face, yeah. pillowcase, or whatever. Could be clothing. Could be. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that would be it great could in be, a sweater. It could go on yeah. the back. Yeah. Of that's what I was going to say. Got eyes in the back of her head. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, kind of creepy, but why not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like creepy stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is beautiful, and your thank scarf you. too. That oh, is so thank pretty. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. There's, There's a little pin cushion. Oh, huge. The oh, mouse huge. on the cheese, yeah. and then this one's a pin cushion. The cat, and it's a little um, fish tank. Oh my gosh, that's great. That's amazing. <laughs> so, do you get your own ideas? Did you sure. design your own? Yeah. It's oh. a, it's uh, right now, in our gallery in um, the hallway here, we have works from our interlace classes, and those classes are for beginners and adults age 55 plus. It's eight weeks of sequential learning, so they yeah. build on their skills week to week, and again, that sense of community. At the end of the class, we have a culminating event where they have to have their items ready to go on display, don't they? And they have a little uh, artist statement with each one, and it's a, they really connect as, as a group, too, and that many of them have continued their friendships beyond their class, which is a lot of fun. So we have everything on our website, uh, so if you're interested in taking a class, it's uh, Textile Center mn.org. Uh, we have over 200 classes a year. They're about on a trimesterly basis. So our winter catalog, meaning January through about April, is up there now. And we also do a paper brochure. So if you're here at Textile Center, you can pick up the paper brochure and have a look or become a member and you get it mailed to you as well. I'll we'll show you our guild wall with those guilds and groups we talked about, 30 different ones. They take Each one takes about two months and displays work from their members as well as tells a little bit about what they do. So today we have Crochet Twin Cities uh, up for the rest. Our Youth Education Associate has created a kit where every month these after school programs, uh, students get to learn a different skill or a different technique with a kit of their own and make something with that technique. And there's about five right now between Minneapolis yep, and St. Paul. We have about five partner sites that we work with. Uh, but you can also purchase the kits online on our website and it's a six month subscription. And then you get, um, the student gets a kit in the mail and it has all the instructions they need, links to videos, tutorials, and so those projects are screen printing, uh, weaving, Coming and all braiding, kind, all kinds of braiding, yeah. yep, all kinds of projects. So we're helping develop the next generation of fiber artists. Our Ellen Erde Wells Professional Grade Dye Lab, very unique in the region, uh, something you don't find everywhere, but we felt there was a need for it with our artisans and our original donor uh, who helped make this possible knew the importance of safety in a lab 
situation. So we have all the things you'd need to be safe, like uh, ventilation and eye wash and things like that, but also large spaces and large scale things. So many of our artists work out of their homes uh, or home studios, possibly even their kitchens or their laundry, <laughs> their own washing machines. But here, you know, we have lots of table space, big vats, uh, your own washing materials. So everything here, you can uh, come and get trained and then how to use it and then also uh, rent it out for your personal use if you're a member of Textile Center. Many of our classes are in dyeing so you can learn the fundamentals in a class to, to begin with. As these are pictures from our recent uh, trip, group trip to Guatemala. It was a textile tour and that's a new program that has really taken off in the last couple of years where uh, we have their small groups, maybe up to 16 people, go along with our dir executive director Carl Reichert to various places and the tours are, are tex heavily textile focused. Uh, this one being Guatemala but they've also been to Morocco, Japan and there's an upcoming tour to India. So this is a new uh, fun growth area for us here at Texas Center. This is the Holiday Gallery Shop, which is in our galleries during November and December at Textile Center. We always have a featured artist, and this year it's Wendy Richardson, who is a Brooklyn Park-based artist, and she is a prolific dyer and loves to take vintage linens and upcycle them. So okay, well, she takes them and dyes them and just gives them an entirely new look and an entirely, entirely new life. Wow. And they're just spectacular. Yeah. And they really show off that crochet uh, stitching and, and the crochet techniques, and yet they're useful in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. She also will have things like um, tablecloths or napkins or pillow cases. Um, it just are these for all sale kinds of things. Here? Yes, they are all oh, for so sale. This, all this is for sale. This is yes. yeah. So oh. During this time of year, this is our shop, and we expand oh, wow. into the galleries for your gift giving pleasure. Uh, one of the big trends these days is is textiles that help you live more sustainably. So instead of using plastic, there are things to kind of help you avoid using plastic. For example, we sell these great uh, from a small maker organic cotton veggie bags. to be able to reuse and reuse and, and upcycle things. So many of our artists take old sweaters that they've found at resale stores. These are uh, pieces of cashmere sweaters that have been turned into little fingerless gloves and also even leather from upcycling and turn them into really durable warm mittens and on a day like today really practical but fun as well. Our winters are long here we have to have fun things to enjoy what that we wear. Um, other artists will take uh, vessels that they've found at various thrift stores and make these fabulous little plants, cacti and uh, succulents out of fiber. And that is a plant you don't have to water and yet it's used, reusing a little vessel that might not have had a life beyond it. These are taking cork instead of leather to, because cork is a sustainable fiber and using this to make a wonderful vegan pouch or handbag and what the bling, uh, zippers to make earrings. Um, it, it's endless so people are just really getting on the bandwagon of using what we have and in a new and fun way. Also, if you're a maker, we have supplies, everything from natural dyes and acid dyes and procyon dyes all the way to needle felting kits and books and looms, etc. So whatever your fiber art interest, we can help support that with supplies. Okay, so here we're in the, what is this called again? Yeah, we're the Weavers Guild of Minnesota, and we're located within the Textile Center. Weavers Guild has been around since 1940, and we've been in a few different locations around the Twin Cities. Uh -huh. um, right now we're standing in our fiber source store, and we have materials um, such as yarn, mm -hmm. books, looms. Uh, um, we're mostly focused on supporting beginner, beginning weavers, but we also have um, weavers who have been weaving for a long time come in and Mm -hmm. and purchase, purchase. And yeah material cool. supplies that sort of thing um, yeah my name is Betsy Conniff and I'm the education manager here at the Weavers Guild excellent okay cool so what are we in here yeah so we're in our main classroom space uh, this is where people learn to weave on a floor loom mm -hmm. um, we also have other classes um, such as beginning rigid heddle weaving or advanced rigid heddle weaving classes in this space and as you can see on the walls behind us um, we do have exhibitions of woven work mm -hmm. um, these are all uh, textiles from Guatemala. Oh, cool. um, we also have another classroom space next to us where people learn to weave rugs and then we have a classroom space uh, on the other side of our fiber source shop 
where people can learn to spin uh, on wheels, wow. drop spindles. I would love to sticks. do all this. Yeah, Man, it's a lot of fun. Someday, I'm going to put it on my bucket list. Yeah, yeah. We'll, oh, we'll be cool. around for a while. Yay, so we'll very good. and it was really eye candy too mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. So hopefully you guys can come and check it out sometime. So until the next vlog, see bye -bye. you later. Bye-bye.